Hey everyone, Tanner here with Team JR. Just want to take a few minutes and uh, show how I set up throttle servos on my aircraft. Um, a lot of people like to do their throttle linkage setup um, very similar to how you would do a control surface where you have your the arm on your servo here is perfectly perpendicular to the case of the servo at center and then uh, try to get an even sweep top to bottom out of the servo. Now today I want to show why uh, that's not always the greatest idea when it comes to your engine and I'm gonna try to demonstrate that here with uh, a friend's airplane that I happen to have on the bench. Um, so this is a fairly typical setup on how I see uh, some people do. So like I said we got the servo arm about perpendicular to the the body of the servo um, and then uh, I see them try to set the linkage out as far as they can on the arm on the servo um, and then so what happens here is I've got the stick at neutral let me see if I can try and show both of these here and as we advance you can kind of start to hear the servo binding up before we even get to full throttle. So you can see it's bending the rod. And then same thing when we go down to idle, the, the servo can't close the carb anymore and we're not even all the way closed. So I want to take some time to show you guys uh, more or less the correct way to do this, to give you a smooth uh, accelerating engine that's very controllable. Okay, so like I said, a lot of people set it up very similar to a control surface, and you need to think of it more like uh, a two-stroke engine rather than a control surface because these are essentially a two-stroke engine, um, which means that they have a power band that they typically like to rev up inside of. Um, so with your linkage like this, um, you can kind of see this is a fairly typical setup let me see if i can get uh you can kind of see the butterfly is about halfway open on the carb down inside there now the problem with this is about halfway open on the butterfly your engine will actually want to rev more towards three quarters of its rpm range so you're revving closer to 70 to 75 percent uh, with this type of setup here. So I want to make some changes uh, to this linkage and I'm going to show you what I do to get a very smooth and controllable uh, two-stroke engine setup on your typical gas airplane. Okay, so first things first, uh, let me get the light on here. So on your travel adjustment menu, uh, you will want to start out with 100 on the high and 100 on the low. Uh, so we're starting with a clean slate here. And something that I personally do to start out is we'll take the throttle trim here. And as you can see right about the center of the screen, it's neutral. And I'm going to lower that all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to show you why I do that in a minute here. Okay, so the first change I did was we moved the uh, the linkage here on the servo arm to the furthest hole in. So that winds up being, I'm going to guess, about three quarters of an inch, half inch to three quarter an inch. Okay, checking with the ruler here, it looks like we're about half an inch. So we're a half inch out on the arm. And it might be hard to tell on the engine side here, but the carburetor arm is, looks like just under three quarters of an inch. So this is actually the most uh, ideal kind of setup where your servo arm is actually shorter than the arm on your carburetor. Uh, that way you can use uh, more travel in the servo and you can increase the, the resolution um, being used. So each servo has a certain amount of steps in each of its rotation, if you can kind of think of it like the face of a clock. 
And the more travel you use on your servo, the more of those steps you get in that range, which means that the servo will be a lot more precise. Very similar to using the shortest arm possible on your control surface to maximize the resolution of your servo. Okay, so I've gone ahead and adjusted the length of our uh, linkage here so that it can get it so that the, the servo arm is pointed very far back at this kind of angle. Um, again, we lowered the throttle trim on the radio and we have the endpoints set to 100% on both sides um, and there's no sub trim. You generally don't mess with sub trim too much on the throttle. Okay, and checking our movement here. So we are able to open the, let me get the light on here. We are able to open the butterfly and the carburetor m about 95%. At this point, the engine's basically going to be at full throttle. Um, so you can increase the top end just a little bit on your, your servo travel to get it fully open if you would like. Um, best practice is to not have the servo at the stop like fully open. So it's best to back it off a few percent. Um, and that's just to do with the vibration of the airplane and the engine shifting a little bit as it accelerates or decelerates. Um, so that way you're not driving your servo to its extremes at full throttle. So what we've done here by repositioning the arm to be, in this instance, the, uh, the carburetor arm moves forward when you open the throttle. Uh, what we've basically done is we've repositioned the arms so that there's more of a mechanical curve built into its movement. So this is about half stick. So you can see that the servo arm is not parallel, sorry, perpendicular with the case. And by doing this, so that's basically um, idle to full, or sorry, idle to half throttle. And basically, that's only allowing the carburetor to open about one-third the way. So now here's uh, half to full throttle. You can see how much more the carb opens going half to full throttle versus about half to close. So we have a mechanical throttle curve built into the servo arm here. Now. We did set the idle all the way down on the transmitter, so as you can see there, we are 100% down on the throttle trim, and that means that the carburetor is fully closed. So now, you can advance that up until the carburetor opens just enough to get a good idle. So usually about halfway open a little bit more than that is perfect for getting your engine to an idle state you can see that the carburetor is cracked open and that's usually sufficient to get the engine to idle this is a da170 so we don't need a lot of uh open on the butterfly here to get this engine to idle okay let's try and put some of this down on paper here you'll have to excuse how crude this drawing is it's just for an example purpose only um, so what I typically see people do is they'll take their radio, they have their endpoints set to 100% on both sides, they'll move their throttle stick to about halfway open, so centered, and then they'll take their servo arm and they'll try to put it on the servo as close to center as they can get it, so that it's about 90 degrees perpendicular to the case. And then they'll set their, uh, their high and their low so that the servo arm moves the same on either side of 90. What that does is it causes a very pipey feeling to the engine where the engine progressively accelerates faster and faster the more throttle you get it instead of accelerating at a smooth linear rate. So you wind up getting an engine that revs extremely fast off of idle and just continues to get faster and faster. Um, and a lot of times that engine will be racing full throttle by about the time you get to, uh, let's say about three quarter open like here, like I mentioned earlier. So then you have this entire range of motion up here 
on your stick from about three quarter open. So let's say from about here to here where the engine doesn't change in RPM. It's already at full throttle. Now the idea with the offset linkage like I showed in this video is to try and help eliminate that. So you have your servo arm at, again, at half throttle. It is not perpendicular to the case of the servo. It's very offset. And then idle is way over here. And then full throttle is just past the 90 degree mark. And what this does is this builds in a mechanical throttle curve where your engine accelerates very smoothly off of the bottom and will rev all the way out to full throttle by the time you get to the top of the stick. So you're getting full range of motion out of your throttle stick and it gives you a very controllable engine. Now I just want to touch real quick on throttle curve. Um, the example on the left here where you have the servo arm perpendicular to the case at half throttle, more often than not, you'll have to build a really aggressive throttle curve kind of like this. And what this does is it causes the engine to have this really dead, mushy feeling down off of idle up into about quarter throttle, and then it kind of starts to come alive a little over half throttle. So um, I'm going to go to about quarter throttle here, and you can see... Let's actually move it to a quarter. So the input on the stick is 25% open and the output is only 4%. So from 25% down to zero, you're almost not even moving that servo open. And then you go from 25% up to half throttle. And so we're at half throttle, 50%, and your output is only 20%. So you're only using 20% of the servo's motion. And then from half throttle to full throttle, it gets progressively more and more aggressive. So you wind up with a situation here where your engine is very mushy on the bottom and accelerates very rapidly on the top end, giving you a very like classic old school two-stroke pipey kind of feeling. Okay, so hopefully this video was a help out to those of you that are a little bit confused about the offset linkage that I talk about on the web. Um, if your preference is to set the servo up uh, how I discussed in the beginning of the video and you want that extreme acceleration out of the engine, by all means go for it. This hobby is entirely about how you want to enjoy it, so if that's what you like then I'm not going to stop you. Uh, but for those of you that are looking for an engine that revs a lot smoother, hopefully this video was a help and hopefully I was able to demystify a little bit of that for you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to fire them my way. I'm an open book whenever it comes to any of this tech stuff.